I'm Roy Lewis. My full name is Roy MacArthur Lewis. I was named after General MacArthur and my daddy, and I'm from Lincoln, Georgia. And I was born in 1942, February the 24th. It was the Lewis family, and we were known as the first, first, first family of bluegrass gospel music. And um, the city of Lincoln honored Pop with the road that goes through there, set up uh, the, the Memorial Highway for James Roy Lewis, and uh, we are honored with that. Uh, I was inducted into uh, the Gospel Music Hall of Fame uh, around 19. 98 or something like that and also in the bluegrass uh in the bluegrass hall of fame i forgot about the lewis family uh was inducted in the uh, georgie music hall of fame back in the early 90s so uh, i've had a good career and uh, a lot met a lot of important people and a lot of uh, simple people and I love people and that's why I'm talking to you. I like you. Thank you. So how many instruments do you play and when did you start learning to play them? I started uh, playing the banjo, started really learning how to play the banjo about 1947. And uh, in 19, uh, I played old, old timey stuff because I didn't know what real banjo picking was until I heard Earl Scruggs on the Grand Ole Opry. And that's when it all started uh, better. But I started, and in 1950, in 1950, I won my first blue ribbon, and that was the first money that I ever had. And in my little museum that I got, I got that shirt that I had on that day. And uh, if people come to Lincoln, I show it to them. I got a lot of important stuff in there. So uh, Roy Clark was one of my best friends, and of course Earl Scruggs. Earl stayed with me all the time. I've met just about everybody you can imagine, and Marty Stewart, I remember him. Uh, his mom and dad would bring him into his hometown of Philadelphia, Mississippi, when he knew they knew the Lewis family wasn't going to sing to 8 o'clock at night, but Marty would have them to bring him into town at 9 o'clock in the morning just in case we got there early. And then he was the prettiest little boy you ever seen. And he toted my instruments and asked me what kind of strings did I use. And another one too was always with him was Carl Jackson. And uh, and that's how I got to you know, that's how I got to know them. Beautiful people. So so Earl Scruggs would hang out with you. Did you oh. guys trade licks at the time? Yeah. Uh, he would show me a lot of stuff that he did back in the old days, you know. Earl was a genius, and it wouldn't even be a banjo today if it wasn't for Earl Scruggs and Don Reno. Don Reno was one of my fine best friends that I ever had until he passed away. And uh, in fact, I bought a banjo from him uh, back in 1964. And uh, and it didn't suit me, and I traded it for a Model A Ford. <laughs> and I still have Model A Fords. I, li I have three of them. I have a 29 convertible. I got a 30 coupe and a 31 sedan. I love Model A Fords because that's what we used to. My Aunt Lena, she was crippled and uh, she taught us our piano lessons and we would all ride two miles in a Model A Ford that Pop paid $75 for. We'd be on the running board and that was the best part of taking piano lessons riding in that Model A. And from that day on, I've had Model A's Fords, and I love them, and uh, I, I, that's the best car I've ever had. Of course, today you ride in a tour bus. We're in a tour bus today. Well, I, I like <laughs> that, but I can't hardly like... wait to get back home to get on my old cars. And, and a lot of times I take people for a ride, and we just have a lot of fun. And even Earl Scruggs love the Model A's. Okay, my first banjo that my brother bought for me, well, I had to use an RB100, my brother that went to the Army, uh, he left me his RB100. 
and I played that banjo from 1950 until uh, 1954 and my brother Wallace went to Augusta, Georgia at Snyder's Music and he bought me a brand new uh, a banjo and it was a master tone uh, it was a you know hard, uh, it was a bow ties in the neck I still have that banjo and uh, I got a lot of them but I that's the one I, that I played uh, for a long long time in 1965 uh, me and my brother Wallace was in Hillsville, Virginia, and a friend of mine named Jane Marshall had ordered two D45 Martin guitars, the first ones of the reissue in 1968. Well, he had this 1962 RB800, and I gave him $500 for it, and my brother bought the D45 for $775. $775. We still have all of them instruments now. What I'm then uh, me and Sonny Osmond, we found uh, the original uh, flathead. We found it in Coburn, Alabama. Rule Yarbrough got it for me. And uh, it's been one of my favorite banjos of all these years that I've had. And uh, But I have a lot of instruments. That's one of my favorites. But what I'm playing right now is a Granada that Gibson gave me in 87. And today, one of my finest friends and I believe the best banjo maker in the country is uh, is uh, uh, Frank Neat. Frank is located in Russell Springs, Kentucky, and he made the banjo that I'm playing. I love it. It's a, it's like a Gibson master tone, but mine. Uh, he made 50 of them, and they are uh, 50th anniversary uh, for me. And I've got the number one, and I've had it since 2000. And I love that banjo. Now, but banjo is not your only instrument, because I no. saw you do a few things on stage. Oh yeah, I love guitar, uh, and uh, I love Martin guitars, and I got a lot of them. And Gibson also gave me my first one in eight, uh, advanced jumbo guitar in 1987. I liked it so good that I wore it out uh, in in 1993 and put it up under the bed, and then I. Uh, they wanted to know why I wasn't playing. I said, it's wore out. So I, they said, I never heard tell of such a thing. So I sent it to Bozeman, Montana. And uh, the president of Gibson called me and said, we have never seen anybody wear a guitar out, but you did. They fixed that guitar. And while I was waiting on that one, they sent me a Brazilian uh, advanced jumbo guitar that I love. And when I turned 70, they sent me another one, and so Gibson has been awful good to me. I like my Gibson banjo, but they don't make them anymore. So Frank Neat, I would have to say, is the best that I've ever played. I love all the harp. It all started back in 1961. In 1961, uh, my sister, we was in Timbo, Arkansas, and uh, they taught all the harp in school. And so we was back there tuning up and all these auto harps. So my sister Janice said, told the principal, said, I want to buy one. I think it cost $40. And so we bought it home, didn't know how to play it. So it sat in the house from 1961 until 1968. And uh, in the state of Washington, it was a, it was a bluegrass group called uh, Soft Tooth Mountain Boys. Soft Tooth. Soft tune, soft mountain tune, boys. Oh, Anyhow, that boy that played the guitar for them was in the army, and uh, he came to see us watch a uh, tape our television program, Lewis family program, and we invited him up to our house. And when he walked in the house, he said, "Who plays the auto harp?" I said, "Nobody. I, I got it in tune, but I don't know how to play it." So he took enough time to show me one song, and fr from that time on, I learned all by myself. My favorite members of Earl Scruggs is, uh, I used to, they used to do a television program in Nashville, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Atlanta, Georgia, Florence, South Carolina, and up in West Virginia. Every Wednesday morning, a Earl's bus would come by 
high, our highway is Highway 378 before Interstate 20. So they've come by, uh, and I found out about it, and I've ride my bicycle a mile and a half and wait on them from 7 o'clock until they come by. But I never would wave at them. And uh, Earl told me one day, he said, Little Roy, he said, if I knew you was like that, he said, we were just sleeping out under the trees because we didn't have a generator, and you could have came to Washington 13 miles and been with us. So that's, that's the story I like of Earl, that how I rode that bicycle and waited, no matter how many hours sometimes to see them go by. I love those folks. Yeah, and uh, he, you said he spent a, a few weeks at a time uh, visiting with you, right? Yes. Were me you guys and recording or hanging out or fishing or? Well, you... No, we didn't do nothing but ride in the Model A and pick the banjo and we go eat and he loved Hardy's biscuits. Hardy's biscuits, huh? And, uh, I saw Lizzie, I saw Lizzie when she was a little girl. She's got an identical twin too. Her name is Rebecca. And uh, her dad used to, used to come by and said, I want you to come down there and play Thanksgiving at our home. So I went down, I guess Lizzie and uh, Rebecca was maybe 11 years old. And Lizzie was playing the fiddle and Rebecca was playing the guitar. Well, I saw the talent they had and uh, Rebecca, she would go out and play with somebody else. Lizzie just stood right there with, on top of that piano and sat there the whole time. And that night um, when we got through playing, that happened about three years. And about one night she said, I won't know how to pick a banjo. She said, we have one up in the attic. I said, well, I said, uh, I'll show you how to do the rope. And uh, so I showed her that road, and the next morning, about eight o'clock, she called me. She said, is this it? I said, yeah. So I went over there, and I took a, a pair of my picks, and I took the, her fingers were so little, I took the pliers and cut, it, cut them off and fitted them to her finger. And then I showed her some more, and finally, the Lewis family was going so much, 100,000 miles a year, I didn't have that much time to do it. So I ordered a Murphy Henry uh, DVD and gave it to her for that Christmas. And I said, don't call me until you know every bit of this. And in two weeks time, she could pick every song. And then from that day on, uh, of course, when she was in high school, I'd take her on the road with the Lewis family and let her do two or three songs with us. And then when she graduated from school, uh, which she got won a presidential scholarship to West Virginia, to Glenville, West Virginia, and they started a bluegrass, they started a bluegrass class of program uh, in Lizzie Shorty. And uh, after that, she moved to Nashville. And then people like Mac Wiseman, people like Mac Wiseman and Buddy Spiker, and uh, and the old sheriff on the. Uh, like Jimmy Caps, and uh, just everybody helped her, and, and Mac showed her how to sing, and Wayne Horn, that Liz is half in with him, with the record company now, showed her how to sing, and uh, there wasn't no, wasn't no lessons, he just, she learned how to do it in the studio, and what he told her, and she can sing anything at any time you want to hear her sing. Yeah. She yeah. loved country music, she loved Dolly Parton, she loved Loretta Lynn first, and uh, she sings exactly my, like my sister Polly. And a lot of people, th even today, said she sounds just like the Lewis family. I said, yeah, the, that's because she listened to my sister Polly. Couldn't nobody out sing my sister Polly. And uh, Lizzie got that same tone. Oh, Grandpa Jones is... Ramona sent me his shirt he wore on, on, on Hee Haw. And I got pictures from Roy Rogers, for Gene Autry that he signed for me. I got uh, I got Earl Scruggs' pics off his fingers in 1987. I got, I got a pocket knife that belonged to Hank Williams and a book that was in the Cadillac the first day of 53 when he's pronounced dead 
Marty Stewart gave me those, and I have a lot of things that I think a lot of people would want to see. And uh, I just, I just like stuff. I even have down my ABC blocks, my baby blanket. I got all of that stuff in my little museum. Anybody ever come to the festival, if we have it once a year, I would be glad to show what I have. Okay, tell all the viewers what the name of your festival is and where it's located it's and when it is. It's the Little Roy and Lizzie Festival, and it's in Lincolnton, Georgia. Lincolnton, L-I-N-C-O-L-N-T-O-N, Georgia. And it's located off of I-20, about 24 miles off of I-20, uh, going towards South Carolina. Always uh, April or May. Okay. Sometimes it have to be in May. Yeah. Because of the date. Yeah. We've had the Oak Ridge Boys, and we've had uh, Marty Stewart, we've had Ricky Skaggs, and, and just about it. And always, we never do a show if Gene Watson ain't on it and Ron Vincent. Thank you. Thank you, and you're a nice person, and I enjoy talking to you, and I hope the people will get something out of this, because really, my whole life, is wrapped around bluegrass music and, and gospel music. I love it. I've been doing it since I was six years old, and I'm 80 now, and I did 58 and a half years with the Lewis family. Then I've done uh, the rest of the time with Lizzie. I hope everybody enjoys our program. I try to put everything I can into what the, You what are the, an entertainer. You are crawling on the floor and tossing around instruments, and I, I don't know where you get your energy, but I hope I'm just like you when I'm 80. I know where it comes from. It comes from good people. And what I know, they enjoy what I do. It makes me enjoy it more myself. And I love people. I like to talk to people. I met some interesting people from California and Idaho and all these states out here that never had seen me. Well, that's the whole idea is to get places where everybody knows you. It ain't nothing no better for somebody wanting to take a picture of you or ask for your autograph. That is the biggest honor that I ever had.